The Pirates of the Caribbean Tall Tale crossover has brought a lot of fresh blood to Sea of Thieves. One question I see asked time and again on Reddit is, can this game be played solo or do you need friends? I aim to answer that and many more questions. This video will serve multiple purposes. It'll answer the question posed in the title, it will be a review of sorts, and it will act as a video journal of my first full week as a pirate. Almost every July my work shuts down for a week or two. It's our slow season and many people like the vacation and to just enjoy the nice weather, celebrate America's independence by blowing off fingers and shit. So the powers that be have made the decision to shut the doors and let the work build up and the workers enjoy the summer heat. This year I decided that while I was off from work, I would make Sea of Thieves my full-time job. I was mostly successful, I got 34 hours in in the 5 weekdays that I played. I'd bought the game the day it came to Steam, and if memory serves, I did the tutorial, said this game is cool, it would be fun with friends, but I don't really have those or the time to learn the game, so I just promptly uninstalled it. The Captain Jack event had brought the game back onto my radar, as many people in my Twitter feed were excited to play it. I figured, eh, why not start now, I'll slip in with all the other new players. So I began my week of sailing, treasure hunting, and fighting. To answer the question posed in the title, yes, you absolutely can play by yourself. It's called solo slooping and many people play that way, some exclusively. There are some caveats though. I worked with some other players, I was in an alliance, which is pretty much like a party in an MMO, as often as I could, but I never had another person on my crew for the entire week I played. I'm going to tell you something a lot of old sea dogs will say is bad advice. I think you should play the game solo at first. This allows you to meet the three main companies, find out who you like working for, and learn the ropes of completing voyage and also sailing with no pressure. You are alone. If you run your ship into the dock, and you will, you don't have to worry about someone else teasing you. And sailing towards a destination by your lonesome, hearing the waves lapping at your hull, the creak of the mass as you angle the sails to catch the wind, and the crack as they billow triumphantly, filled to bursting with the wind you captured perfectly is one of the most satisfying and relaxing things I have ever experienced. I got my reputation to level 25 with the Order of Souls, Merchant Alliance, and Gold Hoarders at the very least. And from what they offer at those levels, the only activity I'd say I did not enjoy was when the Merchant Alliance would give you cages and tell you to fuck off and go catch some animals and then deliver them. Finding where in the islands they are and chasing them down was tedious by myself as I had to capture the animals as well as move the ship. Not great. And also, if I'm honest, at the time, the Order of Souls voyages, they were starting to test my combat abilities as a lone wolf. They're doable, though just you need to be cautious. Each company offers something that I think anyone who would look at this game in the first place will like, if not love. The Merchant Alliance starts out pretty standard. They have you picking up a few crates and delivering them to a trading post or someone located on an island. I started here, honestly, it's surprisingly fun to play peaceful shipping simulator in a game with sea monsters where most other players are bloodthirsty pirates who wouldn't think twice about robbing you. I've had people boldly board my ship and grab one of the crates while I was at an outpost. He got a pistol shot for his trouble, but the sheer nerve gave me pause. Later, the Merchant Alliance will send you out to hunt for lost shipments. I don't think I actually succeeded on one of these voyages in my first week. But the role of investigator following clues to find the lost ship, and more importantly to the Merchant Alliance at least, the cargo, was an astoundingly interesting change of pace from most other activities. Next up is the Order of Souls, and they at first seem to be the most nefarious of the lot. You meet them in dark, candlelit tents, the air thick with the smell of incense, smoke, and perhaps just a hint of blood. You're given parchments with pictures of cursed captains and a destination, and you'll often have to visit multiple islands on a single voyage, killing many skeletons and their captains, bringing back the skulls of the latter for your reward. With this realization, I started to sort of think of these folks in a different light. They're sending crews out to hunt the damned and bring back the glowing evil-infused skulls of their leaders. With tasks like these, your order can't be as wicked as they first appear, can they? As a bit of a side note, I did find these voyages to be rather stressful, because at the end of a long play session, they seem the least likely of the companies to lead you to chests organically. As such, I would often have to be faring many skulls one at a time, hoping some shady pirate didn't slink aboard my ship and steal the proof of my labors for their own profit. Then we have the Gold Hoarders faction. At first, I thought the Gold Hoarders were too little profit for all the work, but ended up enjoying my time sailing under their flag the most. They represent one of the most iconic, albeit least historically accurate, aspects of the pirate life, that being the hunt for buried treasure. 
It starts off as maps looking for an island by matching its shape to one found on your ship's navigation table, and then digging at the X or going to an island named on the scroll and then following instructions as they appear. The first time you decipher the steps, play the music at the shrine, hold your lantern up to the correct wall painting, and then use step one, two, three paces in the name direction and thunk your shovel hits a chest on the first try. Man, that's a good feeling. But my favorite has to be the vaults. You get a compass that leads to buried map pieces, and the X on said map has a key for a certain island. Following the instructions on the key, you place it somewhere and a time door opens in a room with chests and gold piles all around. It's an amazing fusion of Indiana Jones meets Treasure Island. Then the stressful voyage home. I've never sailed so cautiously. And speaking of caution, that is the one thing vastly different about solo play and something that I feel must be understood if you want to have fun and succeed as a solo slooper. It's that combat with players should be avoided most of the time. I've fully thrown in with this game. I'm on the official Discord server, I'm on Reddit, I'm following them on Instagram, and the way I hear players talk about seeing another ship and how they start shooting or chasing it vastly differs from my experience as a solo player. When I see another ship on the horizon, I start sizing things up immediately. I assume that if it's a sloop, I'm outnumbered two to one. So how's the wind? Where should I run if I need to get away? What do I have treasure-wise? Do I think they'll think I'm worth robbing? Do I play it oblivious and hope they just leave me alone? Do I go the friendly route and wave from the deck far away from any of my cannons? If you keep a sharp eye out on the horizon, an ear pricked to the sound of cannon fire, you should always have a chance at surviving to make it to port and be that much richer. So you have to be a coward to play alone, is that what I'm saying? A pacifist? No, far from it. I love combat. I fight with the steely resolve of knowing that I was harried, hunted, and cornered. When I raise the rifle scope to my one good eye and put that ball dead center in the treacherous bastard manning the cannon, I feel no guilt. They did this. When I fire my blunderbuss at the craven that made the holes I was just patching in my hole, my only thought is how if they want my treasure chests and cursed skulls and my cargo, they will have to bleed for them. And as I'm leaping from my deck to theirs, steel glinting in my fist as the flames of my beloved ship silhouette me like the fiery demon burst from the depths of hell itself, I know that they left me no choice. So while PvP may be a game to most, business to others, to the solo slooper, PvP is survival, and that's fun as fuck. I've been Captain Septimus with the Grim Alliance, and I'll see you on the Sea of Thieves. Mm -hmm.